Hello and welcome to this Market Outlook tutorial video. This video is going to give you a, a really powerful way to look at gap downs and evaluate one, whether or not the gap down is a gap down that should be faded, and two, if it is one that should be faded, which ETFs in this particular case should you focus on to fade? And so when I say fade, I mean the market gaps down and you're a buyer. A fade on the upside would be the market gaps up and you're a seller. So yesterday, if I zoom in on the SPIs, you can see that the, the SPIs had closed the day before up here and gapped down significantly down to here. And that's the case across the board in all the indexes. Now, my charts have a 10-day moving average as the green, 20 is the red, and uh, magenta is the 50, and the gray is the 200. So what I want to bring your attention to is the 10-day moving average. All right, so we're below the 10-day moving average in every one of the indexes. The IWMs happen to be sitting, when they gap down, pretty close to support. So the, the play here, if you were thinking about fading, would strictly be that if this is a gap down where we were at new highs, in the spies just the day before this gap down, or I should say two days before this gap down. Same in the diamonds. Can't really say the same for the IWMs, but they are at support. And the Qs probably were, were the weakest looking one as they had not been able to make a new high on this recent move. But for all intents and purposes, you can see that at this time frame, the market has had a strong run. This is a gap down from the highs. So what I'm what I'm going to show you right now is uh, somewhat specific to a strong market. It gaps down. The question is, should you buy it? If yes, then what? Now, of course, in today's action or in this action, you could have bought any of the indexes and done well. That's not always the case. Instead of buying the indexes, you could look at particular ETFs that are actually stronger than the index. And so that's where the, the essence of this video comes in. So I'm pulling in a little big view here, and I happen to be in the sector summary page. And so this is how the day closed yesterday. But what I want you to focus on is what are the leading sectors? So when the market gap down, and I actually did this. So when the market gap down, you, you take a look at what the leading sectors are. Now, I, I'm looking here. We also have our uh, ETF products that have a special TSI ranking that, that does a similar thing. But the, the essence here is that you take a look at the top ETFs, and these have been strong over the last six months, they've been strong over the last three months, and now we wanna see where they've gapped down relative to their daily charts. So we'll take a look at XLV, uh, SMH, uh, IYT, XLF. All right, so basically we're looking at healthcare, semiconductors, transportation, and financials, you know, just to, to keep, it, um, keep it to the ones that are on the top. So let's just take a slightly different look. And remember, all of these have gapped down below their 10. So what, what I'd really like to see in a gap down in an ETF is something that is stronger than the overall market. So XLV is a good example, just on a daily basis. Take a look at XLV here on the right, sorry, on the left, and you can see when it gapped down, it was right at its 10, not below it, and it's gapping down into a very strong trend, not a trend that's rolling over. So that looks like a good candidate. SMH, SMH gapped down under its 10, so this one's not quite quite as good. Does it have any really good support that it's leaning on? No, not necessarily. So we'd really want to see uh, more evidence that this would be one to watch. It's also got a key reversal the day before. So this one's a little um, little sketchy relative to the XLV. Um, and SMH and then IYT. Now IYT under the 10 has had a really negative pattern up top, and it's below major support. I wouldn't get near this one. Now, yes, it went up, but uh, it wasn't the right one to be in. I'll show you that in a minute. And finally, XLF. 
XLF sitting right on the 10 and actually on top of some pretty good support here. So this, I would say, is one of the better ones. Now, I'm going to throw one more in there, and this one didn't come from um, the little big view. Uh, it came from our ETF product, the ETF Sector Plus, but it, it's an extension of the healthcare. Basically, drugs have been doing just as well. This just doesn't happen to be one of the basic industry groups that we show in Little Big View. And so, IBB is one that came back to the 10 and was sitting right into major support. So, if I sum that up, IBB, XLF um, really are the stronger ones. SMF looks pretty good, but uh, IYT, not. Uh, so much. So let's take a look at the intraday price action and get a sense of what went on. So let's just start with IBB because this, this was one that lined up really nicely. On the bottom, on the right, I have the SPY chart, five minute chart with a 30 minute opening range, just to give you a, an idea of how the market traded that day. So the thing that I'm looking at is how do the markets trade relative to their first five minutes? So in the case of IBB up top, initially it went down. And then how do they trade relative to their first 30 minutes? And this is the 30 minutes on IBB. So look at the pattern on IBB. After the spies try to go higher, then come, back, come down, take out the low of their day and fail to go lower, IBB didn't come down and take out the low of their day, did it? So when IBB was breaking out uh, before 11 o'clock, the spies were just coming off their lows. So if you wanted to take a shot at the spies coming off the lows, rather than buy the spies, you could have bought IBB because it was already demonstrating uh, strong strength. Now the other thing about the IBB is look where this level is. The 30 minute opening range is around uh, between 310 and 311. And when you're at 310 on the daily chart, you're back above the prior day's low. You're above the uh, support level that IBB should hold at. In the spies, here's the prior day low. So IBB, you've already taken out significant resistance and you've got good room to run and you're beating the market on intraday um, price action. Let's take a look at XLV. So, so that would be one that you'd want to focus on. Now, the other thing here is I said I was going to tell you whether or not you should try and fade the market or not. Now, when spies are breaking down, you want to look to see what the strongest industry groups are. So is the market going down with the stronger groups going down. In this case, IBB was not. So that was an indication maybe spies would hold, but let's look at the other ones as we go through them. So XLF. So as spies were breaking down, or XLV, as spies were breaking down, XLVs were also breaking down. So that was a little bit of a, of a, a warning sign there that, that maybe this isn't um, a good reversal to try and buy. So we're one and one. Now, if we did want to buy um, a particular XL, a particular ETF, though, again, this one coming off its low is sitting at the 10-day. This one coming off its low is well below the 10-day, not sitting on any significant uh, support. All right, and they both break out at the same time. So this one was basically a mirror of the S&P. It just would have been a better, safer bet based on its daily chart. Let's take a look at SMH. Now, when the spies are breaking down to new lows, SMH was not. Okay, so SMH is telling you, I'm a leading group. I'm not following you down. And... SMH is below its 10-day, but in a much stronger trend than the SPIs. Again, as I said earlier, this was kind of a, a tough area to be looking at it. So, so far, IBBs looked like the best. But again, when um, the SPIs are, are moving up, 
SMH is already sitting near its high. And if SMH goes higher, it's going to actually be taking out the low of the prior day. So stronger all around. But the bigger issue for SMH is it did not confirm that the market that it, the market leaders wanted to go down. IYT. Now, even though it's the weakest on the daily chart here, did not break its 30-minute opening range low when the market did. And you can also see here massive uh, volume there. So while I would not have been uh, a buyer of IYT just because of the weakness of the daily pattern, I would look at the intraday and see, you know what, it's, it's not following the markets down. Now let's take a look finally at XLF, which had been strong. Again, this one's sitting right on the 10. Um, and when the market broke down, this one broke down as well. And um, it came right back with the market. So that one was a toss up as well. So the key here is that half of the leaders didn't break down with the market. The ones that did came right back with the market. And the ones that, um, if you were going to take a shot on any of them, they all were sitting at strong support. So if you looked at the daily charts of the individual ETFs and saw that the leaders were actually sitting at good support and they were holding at the breakdown level, it would give you more confidence that today might have been a day to actually look to buy the lower gap open, not sell it. Even if you didn't sell, even if you didn't buy it and you just didn't get short, could have saved yourself a lot of pain. So I hope that helps. I'll see you in the next video.